Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis joins us now with more on this. Colonel, good to have you with us. So Netanyahu, as we heard, they're vowed to retaliate against Iran. We are waiting for that response. What might we expect? How quickly could it come? Uh, you know, it could literally come at any time. Uh, most likely, it'll also be something that comes at, at night. Uh, but I think it's really important to look at the, the context of all these things, what has led up to this, and probably more importantly, what's coming next. What we, we can't get so focused on the Israeli response to this that we fail to think about it, and then what's going to happen after that. Because the idea that Israel is going to launch something big and severe and painful, to use the words of uh, the Netanyahu yesterday, the expectation should be that there will be another even bigger strike coming back from Iran, and then what? And I think the America's primary objective here should be to tamp things down and to keep this from genuinely exploding into all-out war, because, look, a lot of American troops in that region are very, very vulnerable should Iran take us under attack uh, in retaliation if this thing gets too big. And, and that's what I think too few people are paying attention to. Uh, let's talk about what retaliation could look like, like what type of options are on the table here, especially keeping in mind what you just said, if there is an option to kind of keep it uh, less severe. One former Israeli prime minister has said his country should target Iran's nuclear facilities. That's also something that the U.S. State Department would not rule out yesterday. Could that be the focus for Israel's next, next attack? Do you see something like oil refineries or their power network? Yeah, I think I think you'll probably see some combination of they may go after some of their missile forces, uh, some of their launch sites, uh, but but definitely I can't rule out the the nuclear sites because that's been really a point of contention for a long time, and you, you've had people like John Bolton and Lindsey Graham have been advocating for exactly that for a long, long time. Uh, but again, that has consequences. I mean, we can't they can't get so focused on that big splashy kind of thing that they don't think about what could come next because ironically. Uh, hitting some of these nuclear facilities will damage them, but it's not going to destroy their system. And that might be the thing that pushes them into a weapons, uh, nuclear weapons program that we've been trying to prevent for decades. So when Iran struck Israel in April following a deadly Israeli attack on its consulate in Damascus, the U.S. issued a number of sanctions against Iran. So after yesterday's missile attacks, the White House said Iran would face severe consequences. What does U.S. involvement look like moving forward here? Well, I mean, that, that's really the, the concern that I have, because if, if we start getting directly involved in not just shooting down, uh, you know, these missiles, as, as uh, two of our uh, cruisers did yesterday, uh, then you have the prospect of us becoming the target of some of these missiles in the future. And, and I think that President Biden's primary objective is to keep America out of this war. That's not what we're supposed to be doing in the Middle East. It's one thing to help Israel to give them weapons, but it's a separate thing to to get involved with them because uh, it is absolutely not in America's interest to get in another Middle East war. All right. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, always appreciate your expertise. Thank you. Thank you.